But in the United States, we're dealing with election season. And so there's a lot of uh, training around um, uh, misinformation around campaigns uh, and election issues. Um, there's a lot of misinformation around COVID and coronavirus. And um, with the protests, I'm actually gonna pro uh, focus on some of the misinformation on the protests that are still going on, um, just to show you ways to check out images and videos and sources. So that's what we'll be doing today. So fact-checking. Um, you know, you always, it's the first rule of journalism, right? You check everything. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. I'm sure your mother loves you. Um, but the problem with content these days is that anyone can publish. And so a lot of information looks official, but may not be. And so this is an example of a very new and popular uh, website that has been getting a lot of attention on Twitter, especially called Breaking News 911. And it's sites like this are problematic because they mix real news, like from wire services and real news alerts, with not real news. And they don't always uh, check it out. And so it, it adds a burden to us. We need to check it out before we pass it on. Um, so it looks really official, and some of the news is verifiable news, and some of it is not. Um, and then there are accounts, especially on Twitter, that are pretending to be someone that they're not. So this is uh, an account that was pretending to be, purporting to be Antifa America. But, um, I mean, excuse the language, this is just an example, but you can see that um, they couldn't even spell Black Lives Matters correctly. And so someone checked them out and it turned out that it was um, a fake account that was created by a white supremacist outfit designed to stir up trouble. So even though it, um, it looks real, that one was not. And it was actually removed by Twitter, it was suspended. And later on in this session, I'm gonna show you how to um, look for accounts that were suspended to go back and find saved versions of them. Um, but I've been a foreign correspondent, as I was saying, as this session was starting. And so I know how difficult it is, especially when there's all sorts of new news sources popping up to discern which ones are reliable and which ones are not. And so this is kind of a shortcut, it's a tool um, and like all the tools I'm showing you today, they're starting points. They're not definitive, but they give you sort of a little head start in your reporting and in your filtering. So this is a um, Chrome extension or a web, it can work on any browser actually. Um, it's called NewsGuard and it's um, nonpartisan. Uh, it's very transparent, but it helps, um, helps you discern which news sites are reliable and are not. And so you can get it as a Chrome extension and just add it to your browser. And then you can click on a news story and it will um, tell you about that source. And also if you have it installed, while you're doing a Google search, it will label the results as reliable, not reliable, or hasn't been checked out yet. And um, you know, people always ask who checks the fact checkers, who decides what is reliable or not. And so it's too pro small to see on your screen probably, but you can go to the website and you can see all of the criteria they use. And they go through a checklist and you can decide for yourself whether you agree with their judgment or not, and then decide whether or not to use that tool. But I think it's pretty reliable and um, useful. Um, so it works like this. Um, when you do a Google search, um, so you're working on a story about fracking and it gives you results like with a red, a red shield saying that's not a reliable source and tells you why. Um, or they may give you a green shield saying, yes, we've checked out the BBC and we've deemed them reliable. And then this one here with a little uh, line across it just means we haven't checked it out yet. 
So proceed with caution. Um, another problem with information today is that sometimes it can come from a reliable or a verified source, but the information that they're promoting or passing on is not factual. And I just do want to do a disclaimer here. I'm not trying to pick on any particular person or party or anything. I'm um, loyal only to the facts. Um, but I wanted to highlight this tweet that got a lot of attention last week um, from the president, which turned out to be full of false information once people checked it out. And he was saying that, I don't know if you saw the video, and I'll show it to you in a minute, of the 75-year-old man who was pushed to the ground by police. And so um, it turned out that he was a, a protester. He was affiliated with a Catholic uh, religious group, um, but he was not an Antifa provocateur trying to, to scan and block police communications. And that has been um, proven in the follow-up, but you know the president has um, millions of followers. And so this was very, this information spread very widely. Um, so here is the video of the man that he was talking about. I don't know if you've seen that, but we can take a look at it in a minute and I'll show you ways to look more closely at videos and at the sources of them. But that's the story that he was talking about. And then there was another story that came from a verified source, you know, got the blue tw uh, check mark on Twitter. Um, which isn't an endorsement by Twitter of their credibility. It just means that they ha Twitter has checked them out and they are who they say they are. It doesn't mean that their information is um, endorsed or reliable. But this came from the White House, which um, should be a source of reliable information. It's an official source. Um, and they put out a video of, um, they called it brick staging. Um, they said there were piles of bricks around protest sites uh, that were put there by protesters to give themselves projectiles, things to throw. But when reporters actually checked it out, they found that most of these pallets of bricks were just there because it was a construction site. And this one in particular uh, shows a pile of stones in a wire uh, cage, sort of. And this was part of the White House video. And it turns out it was meant as a security barrier. There's several of them here. You can see in the photo, it's very tiny for you to see, but it was there were security barriers placed in front of a Jewish community center in Sherman Oaks, California. And so the Chabad of Sherman Oaks put on their Facebook page, these, these piles of stones have been there uh, since 2019. So they were not placed there by protesters or even by um, police to entrap protesters into to throwing things, which was another conspiracy theory. So these are just examples of sites that appear to be legit that are not, or sites that are legitimate that sometimes put out false information. So what do we do if we have to check out everything? I mean, our job as journalists is to be skeptical. But we don't want people who read our stuff to not trust it. So we want to be um, a reliable source ourselves. So I'm just going to show you some of those tools. Um, so when the Washington Post fact checker confronted the White House with the results of their reporting, the White House did take down that video, um, conceding that it was misleading. But Google has put together a, a search site that's dedicated to, to fact checking and it aggregates other organizations fact checks. So it's sort of one stop shopping. So if you go to g.co slash fact checking, then you can just put in the claim. Um, so here I typed in bricks for protesters and you could see um, other groups had checked it out like factcheck.org, checked it out and found there was no evidence that this was true. And so that's um, an, an easy place to go, just you know, a first stop uh, if you're wondering. Now, it may be a claim that hasn't been checked by anybody else, and then you get to do the checking yourself. So here's some ways to do it. Um, 
Uh, we all know that it's easy to Photoshop an image. And even with good intentions sometimes, um, this was a picture from GQ magazine. They were covering the Tech Titans technology conference. And it turns out that there were a couple of women at the conference, but they didn't make it into the group picture. So somebody just Photoshopped those women into the picture. Watch this space. Voila. <laughs> there she is. There's one more. Um, so, one way to check out images that might come to you, you might spot the image on social media, um, a user might send it to you as user generated content. Um, but if you want to check out an image, there's an easy way to do it. Um, you can search by image on Google, just like you can search by word. And so you go to images.google.com and you'll see a little camera there in the search bar and you can drag and drop an image right there into the search bar. Or you can get the URL, the web address, and paste it in. Or you can upload an image from your own computer. And you can actually check out an image right from your screen. Um, and so here's how to do that. So here's an uh, image that came across my Twitter last summer during the Hong Kong protests. And it's a great image. Uh, it shows a protester returning a tear gas canister with a tennis racket. But I used to be based in Hong Kong, and there was just something about it. It didn't look right to me. I think maybe it was that the graffiti was in English back here. And so you can check it out by doing a right click. You just hover over the photograph and do a right click um, on the photograph. And if you have a MacBook Pro, if you're using a laptop, you can do a two-fingered click. You just push both fingers down on the trackpad. And it makes this menu box pop up. And then you go to search Google for image. And you'll get a search result. It may have stories about that image um, if it's been around for a while. And it will also show you all the visually similar images that have been uploaded. And so um, you can take a look at those results and sort of uh, click through and investigate. And when you do, you'll find that this was indeed a Reuters photograph, but it was not taken last summer in Hong Kong. It was taken in 2016 at a labor demonstration in France. So that is a pretty uh, good technique um, that I think protesters in Hong Kong did end up using, but that was not a picture from Hong Kong. And you, know, you could even imagine that this picture would be recycled in this round of protests. And so that's something you often see, images that are out there that are recycled or manipulated or edited, photoshopped, um, especially in times of protest, conflict, um, campaigns even, old stuff made new. So you wanna check it out. Here's a, a new picture that harkens back to old. So this came across Twitter last two weeks ago, I think, June 2nd. Um, playing off of the president's photo op in front of St. John's Church, holding up the Bible. And they're like, look, who else did that? But if you look at the hands, look, the hands are exactly the same, almost the same. So if you do a reverse image search on that image, you can find the old original image, but see that the Bible was Photoshopped in. So this is the original, the black and white one, and this sort of sepia tone one was um, manipulated just to make a political, political point. Um, here is another Twitter image that was circulating um, around the protests in Washington, and it purports to show a big explosion right in view of the Washington Monument. But if you do a reverse image search on that, your two-fingered click or right click, um, you would find that it was an image from a television show called Designated Survivor. And so no, there wasn't an explosion, there wasn't a blackout. I happened to be up all night that night for some reason, I was like, wait, there's no blackout. Um, so the, that's a good way to look at images. Does anybody have any questions about that? You can try it right now. Yes, go I ahead. I have a question. Uh, how do you do this reverse image uh, check? 
You just said the reverse image. How does one do that? So you can do it several ways, and I'll go back. The easiest way is just to hover over the image on your computer. And um, if you're using a mouse or a PC, you do a right click. And if you're using a Mac laptop, you can just um, put your cursor over the image and click with both fingers on your trackpad, and that will bring up this little menu. Do you want to try that? See if it works for you? On, on any photo that you can pull up on the web. You can also, let me go back to the beginning. Um, you can also drag and drop the image if you have the file onto the search bar or if the image has a is coming from a website, you can paste in the web address here or upload it from your computer this way. So those are four ways to do it. Okay, got it, thanks. Did it work for you? Yeah, it did, thanks. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I wish I were in the room with you guys so we could just look at your screens. Um, but you can also do this for video. Um, and keep the same things in mind when you're looking at video. You know, you could just be seeing part of a video that doesn't show the whole context. Um, someone could have um, edited it to deceive you or even try to man manipulate the content. Could you um, explain again? Because I'm hovering over images and uh, I think I'm right clicking. I have some kind of modern mouse. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, it's not working for me at all. Um, are you in Chrome? Yeah, I'm in Chrome. Uh, do you have a PC or a Mac? A Mac, but it's with a mouse attached. It's not a, it's a, a desktop. It's a desktop with a mouse attached. So you don't have a trackpad. So, um, and you have a, a mouse with a double-sided click or you? Yeah, you, I mean, the right click is what we click for everything, right? Right. Well. I mean, it's yeah. just a regular click. Um, a right click, uh, it depends on your mouse, really, um, because on the Apple mouse, you actually have to sort of put your finger on the right side of it and click. Yeah, I don't have an Apple mouse. So I've got okay. an ergonomic mouse, but maybe okay. that's the problem. OK, I don't want to slow you down. OK, I would just. Um, play with it, Google it, see if there's a certain way to do a right click with that kind of mouse. OK. Yeah. And could you give us the uh, the tool again? You said search by image, or there was a tool you showed us, but I didn't get the URL for it. You know, it's you don't have to do anything. You can just go to um, your search page and click on images. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant NewsGuard. I went to look for NewsGuard on Chrome extensions, and I don't see NewsGuard. Let's go back to NewsGuard. Sorry, I'm just looking for things as you're talking about it. And uh... okay, so um, its full name is NewsGuard Tech. Oh, maybe that's why then. Okay. Dot com. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll find it then. Thank you. Okay. Well, let me let me jump out and get back to where we were. So this, I was going to show you um, a couple of tools, and I'll just stay out of the presentation to demonstrate it. Um, One quick question, please, yeah. if you go ahead. Does this work on uh, Safari also, or only on Chrome? Um, I think it only works on Chrome. Okay. Yeah, but you can try it on Safari. Um, and try it right now on your Safari and tell me if it works on Safari as well. Because okay. um, all of these tools, you know, Google develops them, so they start on Chrome, and then as time goes on, they expand them to encompass other browsers. I mean, I have both on my computer, so it shouldn't be a problem. I just want to okay. <laughs> have Chrome as well as Safari, so yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the tools to check out the video. Um, is a, it's invid, um, but it just, I, I believe it just hived off the verification part to a company called We Verify. And so you can search for invid, but it may come up with We Verify. And now the, um, 
the Chrome extension, or it works on any browser, I shouldn't call it a Chrome extension, uh, will be we verify. And um, it looks like. Is it possible that this um, NewsGuard tech is not an extension either? Because it's not showing up. Is it just a website? Well, if you go to the website, it should take you to the extension. NewsGuardTech.com. I've got it on my computer. Um, it's here. Yeah, get NewsGuard. Okay. NewsGuard you, Tech. Okay, because I was trying to get it through Chrome on extensions. It doesn't come up. It doesn't come up, huh? No. But thank you. Okay, so go to NewsGuardTech.com and click the link, and it'll take you right there. Sure. And in vid, vid, probably the same thing, right? Right. Okay. Exactly. Sorry for interrupting. Nope, this is what we need to do, because we want you to end the session actually having the tools and knowing how to work with them. Okay, so, so here's an example. Um, you'll detect a theme here. <laughs> this is a protester who's uh, drop kicking or doing a nice soccer volley of a tear gas canister back to the police. And so this came across Twitter. And um, I made it nice and big so you can see it, but I'm gonna put it back in Twitter so you can see it in context. So same thing, you can just um, double click <laughs> or right click and copy the video address and then um, go to Invid or to uh, We Verify extension and paste in the link that you just copied. And did you know you could do that? You can just get the video address right from, right from Twitter or right from any other things. So this is taking a while. Um, so you can do all sorts of things. This does a forensic analysis. Um, it's taking a minute, but let's, let's try this, uh, just a re regular analysis. So the forensic analysis looks at it on a pixel level to see if it's been manipulated, if anything has been added, you'll get like a bright red spot if the pixels don't match the other pixels. So that's a nice thing to look at, see if it's been um, manipulated. But you can also do sort of um, a metadata analysis. You put it in and it tells you where it came from, when it was uploaded, um, who the owner of the account is and how they describe themselves. He's a comedian. Um, and it, it shows you how many times that uh, tweet has been liked and shared, and also when it was created. So this was created not last, uh, not last week, but you know, a while ago. Um, and you can also, it also gives you a thumbnail that you can do a reverse image search on. And you can do it in Google image reverse search or Yandex, which is a Russian one, or TinEye. And um, you know, we'll, we'll try a non-Google tool about. Um, and I think you can choose somewhere whether you want it in Russian and English. It all came up in Russian. Um, but it will do the same thing, and it will find whether this has been uploaded before. So that's Yandex, which works just like the Google image. Um, so Invid also has a Chrome extension like this. And so let's go back to that and try it through the extension. And so it'll just open it up right there um, without you having to paste in the URL. And uh, so it has all of these things. It does that for forensic analysis um, and, and a magnifier so you can look at the details, all sorts of things. So that's a really useful tool. I use it all the time. Um, not a Google tool, I'll point out. I'm not showing you only Google tools. Um, I'm showing you anything that I think will be useful for your work. Um, here's another one called Watch Frame by Frame. 
Com. And if you're working from home, you probably don't have sophisticated editing equipment. Um, and so for this video that we saw of the, the man being pushed to the ground, um, I loaded it into watch frame by frame. Okay, I'm sorry. So that video is a little bit disturbing, but um, it's good to watch. So if you're just watching it on YouTube, it's hard to see it frame by frame. But if you upload the URL into watchframebyframe.com, you can set the number of frames per second here. And then you just um, hit this arrow and you can see, you know, every time you click, it'll advance it, you know, one frame or 25 frames, whatever you, you set. And you see, you can look a little bit more closely. What is that in his hand? Is it a police scanner or is it a cell phone? And then you can see the president claims that he, he staged his fall, but you can see there, he's pretty clearly pushed and falling hard You know, clearly off balance, he's 75. Um, and so this is really good for police body cams, um, for user generated video. Um, if you're just trying to slow down a moment and, and watch it in more detail. So that's watchframebyframe.com. Now, sometimes you will um, be looking for an image and not be able to find anything. And that may be because the person does not exist. More likely it is that the image has not been uploaded to the internet before, but I wanna make you aware of this new thing called AI generated faces. And um, there's a whole website called thispersondoesnotexist.com that has a database of 10,000 faces, artificially generated faces that people can download and use. And they say it's for, say, dissidents who want to um, be present on social media but not be targeted by the government, or advertising agencies that want to use a whole range of models or children but uh, don't have access to them. But you can imagine, as a journalist, all sorts of other nefarious purposes for using a false identity. Um, so. That's just to make you aware that these exist. And so to let you play with it a little bit, there's a site called whichfacesreal.com. And it shows you pairs of images. One is real and one is not real. And so um, it helps you kind of become aware of what an uh, artificially generated image looks like and some of the telltales. And um, some of the signs are, um, the AI images have trouble with like the little fine hairs around the, the head or making the ears match or shadows and blemishes and wrinkles. Um, the skin tone tends to be more even on the AI generated images, but they're getting more and more sophisticated. And as soon as we can detect something that is a telltale, the people who are making them can uh, adapt to that and focus on fixing that. So it's really a game of cat and mouse with these high tech tools, um, with the deep fakes and with these AI generated images. So Miriam, I know you're paying attention. Um, which person do you think is um, the real image? This guy on the right or the guy on the left? I think the guy on the right, I think. You think the he's real right? image, yeah. Let's see. You are correct. And so what made you pick him? Well, because the hair is more defined, the picture is more defined, the better quality. So in a lower quality picture, it's more likely that it would be fake. Yeah, that was a, a good observation. Um, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Um, sometimes the pictures have little glitches in them. But um, let's see, I can't tell if that's a glitch on the picture or a glitch on my screen um, right there in, in the forehead. It looks like it's um, on the picture. It's on the picture. So are you guessing that the man is real? Well, but also the hair on the guy is not so uh, clear either. Uh-huh. The fine hair is a little bit better. You're right. You're right. 
you can see the defined strands there and his ears yeah. a little funky here so yeah. I, let's clear no, take the right the right again i could be wrong but the person who was real yeah i would say the little girl okay oh you're good look at that <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to keep playing with this and just make yourself aware of sort of the patterns, um, whichfaceisreal.com um, is kind of a fun fun and educational time waster. I have a question, though, about the videos, uh, if, if that's OK. Um, what happens when you have basically, because videos can be re-edited, right? Yeah. Yes. Not necessarily the files that we are reviewing are the same files that you know, are being are being used. Basically, I can use a frame from one thing, re reshape, re-edit, and put it in another video. Right. So would the verification tools also work for those cases where the video has been edited? That's a great question. And there's one tool that Amnesty International developed. I think it's called uh, Video Data Viewer. And it will not catch those manipulated or edited videos. It will only catch if the same video has been uploaded before. Um, but the nice thing about InVid is it gives you metadata about that actual instance, and it can break down the keyframes. So if there's a key moment, you can take a, it's like a snapshot of that frame and do a reverse image search on that and see if that's ever been used before. So what it's really good for is um, the metadata, the forensic analysis is also helpful. It shows if the pixels have been manipulated um, and um, the magnifier. Those are all helpful at looking at these videos more carefully. And then Google is also developing, actually it's Jigsaw, which is Google's sister company under Alphabet, um, is beta testing this tool in newsrooms called Assembler. And it's similar to what Invid does. It, um, lets you go over a photograph and see that red hot spot that shows that the flag has been added to that image of the building um, and so it it also does pixel level um, detection and they've got one for deep fakes as well for the deep fake videos that they're working on um, but if you are if you are into this um, kind of forensic investigation um, there are lots of what we call open source intelligence tools. And this site in London called Bellingcat is the standard bearer of online investigation and all of these tools. And so if you go there, they have all sorts of um, tools like how to investigate TikTok or how to detect Russian disinformation or um, they've done a nice compilation on COVID misinformation. They're collecting all sorts of known examples of disinformation on that. So Bellingcat, I really recommend you investigating that. And so um, if you came through to this session on the calendar invite, there's a document attached to that calendar invite, um, but we will also send it to Thanos or Miriam to send out to everybody who signed up. It's a, just a Google Doc with all of these links. Um, and I also added a link today. Um, this is a good sort of walkthrough of how BBC Africa Eye used a bunch of open source tools to do an investigation. There was someone posted on social media uh, an execution, uh, just shooting someone in the back of the head. And so they used metadata and geolocation tools from the post to kind of zoom in on where it was uploaded from. And then they use Google Earth to match the backgrounds with geo geologic features like this hill. And then they sent reporters to the area and interviewed people and they actually found out who was, in, who was behind the execution. So it's a really nice walkthrough of how to use all of these different open source tools to do investigative reporting. When this okay, so um, I'm about to show you what's called a deep fake, where um, they can use artificial intelligence to make someone look like they're saying something that they never said. And so I'm about to show you just a little clip from Kim Kardashian. 
it's not really Kim Kardashian. But here we go. When there's so many haters, I really don't care because their data has made me rich beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> so she says data makes her rich. Um, but she she may or may not believe that, but she didn't really say that in that video. It was just someone, um, they make a map of facial expressions, um, especially easy to do with public figures where there's a lot of video available, and then um, can manipulate uh, their facial movements to match the words that they are putting into their mouths, literally putting into their mouths. And if you want to find out more about how that works, there's a nice online little uh, training uh, module done by Reuters called Manipulated Media. It's Reuters.com slash Manipulated Media and explains how AI is created, these um, deep fakes are created, and different ways to detect them. Um, it's a nice um, way to raise your awareness, but also be aware that as soon as we learn about how to detect them, they are learning about how to not be detectable in that way. So it's a cat and mouse game. Um, but there's a lot of just really basic tools um, that we can use to detect people who are trying to manipulate information. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a deep fake. It could be a cheap fake. You know, Nancy Pelosi with the video slowed down to make it sound like she was slurring or drunk. You know, that was just the audio slowed down. And there were enough other cameras there at that event that you could just compare other videos to the one that um, that made her look so bad. So if there's something that raises a red flag for you, the easiest thing to do is see who else has that story and how are they reporting it? And is it different and why? We can also try to find out who posted it. And here's a nice little um, website, who.is, that tells you um, information about who registered the website. So this is good for looking at fake websites or um, uh, there's a there were a bunch of websites that were started up in Michigan, which is a swing state, um, that had a mix of real news and not real news. And so you can go to whois.com and find out who registered it. And when you do that, this one happened to go through a, a proxy registration, which means they were hiding behind another company to keep their registration private. Um, so more often you, you can see who registered it and even has their phone number and sometimes their email. Um, and that's really good for sourcing. Um, but if they do do a private registra registration, you can also search um, and compare. So this is another Michigan website that was suspect, the Lansing Sun. And they had the exact same private registration company registered on the same day and had the same IP addresses. So even doing that sort of uh, cross-referencing can be helpful. Um, and then we talked before we looked at that um, Antifa America site that had been taken down on Twitter, that account that had been taken down. And if that is the case, that you think that someone has deleted or altered their account or their website, you can see the most recent instance of their account. You know, the web in search engine is always crawling and recording accounts and they keep a cached version. So you can put in your search bar cache colon and then the name of the website and get the latest version. And just to um, digress a bit, you can do all of these search refinements to make your search a little bit more specific. You can take out a term, you can search a certain site, you can search um, a certain kind of file type if you're looking for data sets, for example. But here's an example of how you can search a cached site. Oh. And that's what you would get. Whoops, you go cache colon twitter.com slash Antifa America. And then you can see the last save version uh, before Twitter took it down. Um, there's another way to go even farther back in time. That's the Wayback Machine, um, archive.org. Also, 
not a Google tool, this one, um, but super useful because um, you can go back a decade or you can go back a week and it'll give you a calendar um, or a list of all the tweets and you can sort them by time. You can just click on the calendar if you're looking for a certain day and it'll show you what they tweeted on you know, that day, January 12th, for example. Um, and then someone asked me recently about how to search Facebook. And Facebook used to have a tool called Graph and you could just search uh, as simply as, you know, show me the users who um, drink beer and like to watch car races. And they would show you all the people who had, who had liked those kinds of pages. But Facebook disabled that or they made it much harder to find and use. So there's another site called graph.tips and you can use that to search Facebook. It looks very basic, but it was um, created by one of the people who works at Bellingcat. And for some of the searches, you need to find the Facebook user's ID. And so there's this site, findmyfbfacebookid.com. And you can put in the Facebook user's name, it'll give you the ID number, and then you can cross-reference that. So if you're going to get into this forensic kind of stuff, uh, those are two tips. And those are in the list of, you can screenshot this page, um, or you can um, wait and look at the document. Um, OK, so another thing um, that pollutes our, our ecosystem of information are bots. And those are automated accounts that are appear to be human and are interfacing with other humans, but are not. They're automated accounts. Um, and you see a lot of this in, in trolls and in disinformation, just trying to amplify a message, um, make some sentiment seem more popular. Um, but you, you can spot it as a human when you see a bunch of posts that have similar words or pictures or hashtags. Um, or you look at that account and they tweet a hundred times a day or a thousand times a day. You know, most humans don't have that capacity. Um, or if they don't have any picture or history or followers, or they only follow, or follow similar accounts, those are signs that it could be a bot or a coordinated human campaign, but likely disinformation or misinformation. Um, so the in Indiana University has created a tool called Botometer, and it does an audit of a Twitter account. And it has a little meter here from blue, which is most human-like behavior, to red, which is bot-like behavior. And they classify bot-like behavior as tweeting more than 75 times a day. And maybe we all know people who do tweet more than 75 times a day, um, but they're the really ardent uh, tweeters. Um, people who just amplify or retweet other people's content um, or tweet around the clock. You know, even most humans need to sleep. Um, this is another tool that does a similar thing, Twitonomy, and they give you also metadata about the account, but you can see when, um, when that account is tweeting and how much. And another tool from Indiana University, which I found that I've been using a lot, is called Hoaxy. And it gives you a timeline of the spread of information so you can see if something is going viral. And um, this is good to help you determine whether or not to report on a piece of disinformation. So if it only reaches a small audience, then maybe it's not worth drawing attention to it and giving it oxygen. But if it's really burst out into the mainstream, then maybe you want to report it and debunk it. But when you do, a good thing to remember is not to drive more traffic to that bad site because it will make it more popular and elevate it in some search algorithms. Um, what you can do is upload that URL to archive.org and then use that archive.org link um, and then people can just see basically a snapshot of it. And even if the account is deleted, um, you'll still have 
a record of it that people can go back to. So this is nice because um, I'm going to show you in a minute. It's animated, but you can also um, tweet the result, share it, or embed it on your website, or download the, the data if you're a data journalist and want to play with it. So here's an example from um, the hashtag Mayor Cheat. It's after the Iowa caucus, and this guy, Jack Posobiec, Posobiec I'm, maybe I'm saying that wrong, um, started this hashtag Mayor Cheat, saying that Pete Buttigieg stole the Iowa caucus. And you can see how it started and how it spread. And those are the nodes of the network. And you know, it didn't get very far. And it wasn't picked up by a lot of bots, but that's useful information about it. Um, go to the next slide. Here's another one. Um, this was uh, the name of the alleged whistleblower in the impeachment hearings. And so Real Clear News did a story about it on Halloween. And then the next day, these two accounts were responsible for tweeting it really uh, widely. You can see how many followers they had, their big nodes and networks, and how far it, it got. Even got out here to this account, Cat Turd 2. Um, but so hoaxy is a really good tool for tracking that's my alarm telling me we're almost done um tracking viral information um and so this is the last thing i'm going to show you it is the how to find the deleted tweets of public figures of politicians so um you can search by state your congress member in your state and most of the deleted tweets are people who have typos or what kind of want to reframe their idea. But every once in a while, you get that middle of the night tweet that someone regrets in the morning and wants to delete. So it's an interesting thing to check out every now and then. Pollet whoops. It's done by the Sunlight Foundation and ProPublica. So those are just some interesting tools to help make your reporting a little bit easier and to show you different ways that um, bad actors are manipulating information. Um, if you would like more, uh, more training for your colleagues in your home country, you can email us at newslabsupport at google.com. Um, if you have any questions about what we talked about today, email me at mfarley at google.com. And um, I'm going to just open it up now to any questions that people have, any things you want to discuss. Um, otherwise, check your calendar invite for that document that has all of the links, or uh, Miriam or Thanos will try to send it out to everyone who signed up. No, Maggie, this is absolutely amazing. Like the amount of tools you just share, uh, my mind is blowing a little bit. <laughs> I'll probably start checking everything. I do have a question because most people here are international correspondents. So a lot of the times, especially in the last the last slide when you talked about the deleted tweets, is that only to do with American politics or English speaking politics? Or can we also expect to find this type of information on different languages or different political scenarios. So that that particular tool, Politwooks, is only for American politicians um, because they believe that um, people should be able to see what they're, they're thinking and deleting. But the interesting to know is that Twitter does have an API that is accessible. So your developers can access the API and see the politicians in your country or you know certain people and what they've deleted so it it is accessible you just have to know how to do it which is beyond me frankly but maybe we'll figure you it out to... we'll figure it out <laughs> could i could i ask you had a um a screen up about who posted it but i didn't get any uh it, was there something where we can see who posted something for which after that you did who is com, but who posted it? Was that uh, a tool? Yes. Yeah, so who dot is 
we'll show you. No, uh, who, who, who dot is you showed us, but you yeah. had a question, a screen that, that said who posted it. Is that a tool or if that was just a screen? Oh, no, that was just the question. Oh, OK. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Introducing that section. OK. I didn't know if it had to do with posts that you could see who the person actually is. OK. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm just going to stop recording the questions um, just to make the video a little bit shorter. So, um, But we can keep asking questions. I'm just turning off the recording now.